All right, this is uh, about uh, the fuel fuel tabs uh, and either the ECU config or the direct access tables. Could have sworn I'd already made a video uh, on this already, but maybe it got deleted somehow. So I'm just doing it again, uh, rehashing it. And uh, basically we'll first start off with the sliders here uh, going across and the ECU config uh, tab. Now these tab or these sliders here, these were made when uh, ECM Link first came out for uh, the first version and the second version V1, V2, um, and then uh, V3 came out, which had the actual tables. So a lot of people don't understand reasons why these are even here. Um, people may not have been around long enough back in the days for being into DCM or ECM Link. Um, to know why why these were used at the time and, and why they didn't have the other tables but um, back in the day this is all we had it gets the job done and uh, but you can make adjustments with these uh, live on the fly without having to turn the car off where as as opposed to this table here for the max octane and minimum octane tables here where you put each one individually um, you have to do with the car off and the key on to be able to save it. Now this is basically uh, normally what I use it for is my target uh, air fuel ratio. Uh, you do them per per RPM. These are good if you want to make an adjustment just to see if it if it makes the change, and then you go back and save it later if you'd like uh, to to uh, the direct access table and these later thing you have to keep in mind is let's say if we are let's say our 6000 slider let's say we want to remove uh, let's say 5.1 percent of fuel we're trying to lean it out a little bit everything we're removing here in the sliders in that same 6000 RP, uh, rpm slider we're removing that same same amount here in this whole rpm range so that's the thing you have to keep in mind. So as opposed to this one in that whole 6,000 slider uh, RPM, we can just do one cell in that 6,000 RPM slider, not the whole, not the whole uh, row right here. So, uh, and you have to keep in mind to uh, shut the car off to make the changes here. So uh, that is one thing to keep in mind. Now, normally I, you want to use one or the other, either the sliders in general or make adjustments to the table uh, and direct access itself. A lot of times I'll see people make the changes here. They'll lean it out a whole lot or richen it up. And then they make additional adjustments here going the opposite, which basically will cancel the, each other out. Or they may lean it out here and then lean it out here as well and compounding the issue. So you're, you're subtracting that much more fuel. So it's much easier just to use one or the other. This one's a little bit uh, a little bit better in the fact that you can create the tables that you want, how lean you want it for each cell, uh, for your load range, your RPMs, uh, and so on. You can have a little bit more fine tuning as far as that's concerned. Whereas our sliders here, you're going to be um, doing a whole row uh, or that whole load scale for that particular RPM increment. So um, that's the thing you have to keep in mind there. Um, but like I said, it is this can be useful in that let's say if you're at the drag strip and you're a little bit lean and you want to add some fuel, uh, you're pulling up to the line, you want to add a little bit more fuel, you can just bump it up a little bit. Say, for example, in 6,000, save it while the car is still running, make a pass. And then let's say if you added 1.6% of fuel uh, on that particular run at 6,000 and it works out well, well, then you can come back here. You can look at your log, see what load range you're in. Uh, what RPM you can add that percentage just to those particular cells versus the whole row. So, so that does become helpful. Um, then also too as well, uh, the thing that's helpful in this one, let's say if there's someone else that may have a uh, fuel table that might be useful to you, you can you can basically right click and you can copy the whole table, and so you can send your uh, or, or if someone sent it to you or you're sending it to someone else, you copy the table go go open up another log or someone else's log and and then right click and you can paste that same table so uh very easy as far as doing that and you've got your max octane and your minimum octane so let's say if you've got different fuels uh you may have a, a 
pump gas tune, a uh, E85 or race fuel. You can use use the different tables for whatever it is you like. If you're using uh, methanol injection, you may only want certain certain um, certain air fuel ratio that you're targeting uh, based on when you hit a certain boost or whatever the case may be which is where you're going to be going into one of these other tabs here as far as using uh, secondary tables, uh, the ox maps, as far as using the secondary tables. But we're not really covering that in this video, basically just covering the functions of what well, these are for, maybe how to make the adjustments and so on. Uh, as far as the sliders, you can also right click, you can zero all adjustments. Um, you can interpolate, which is basically smoothing them out. You can set the values to whatever whatever it is you want. I'll say 5%. You just move that one up that was highlighted. Let's say we'll go back over here, right click again. We'll zero all adjustments. Then we can, let's see. We can highlight them all. We can right click, set values to, and we can click 5% and move the whole table up. So depending on how you want to do it, normally I just do one at a time. Uh, but that should that basically covers that as far as the sliders and the uh, max and minimum octane. Uh, the bad thing about this the sliders here is that you can't have really secondary maps because it's just this is the only tab you get. So uh, then we move down here. This is basically your global fuel and your global dead time, basically setting up your overall fuel. Um, basically, click calculate. Now, one thing I do see a lot of people doing is that they don't realize that this box right here is the same one right here. So, same same box, just different location. Someone may change their uh, injector size. Let's say, I'll we'll say fifteen hundred. We've got um, well, we're not worried about our base fuel pressure and stoichiometric ratio right now at the moment, but changing our injector size to fifteen hundred, calculate changes to negative sixty seven point eight. Okay, you hit calculate, it changes this one. Notice this one's still at 55. That change hasn't been made yet. Click use, and now it is changing. It's basically rounding it off in this particular instance. If you come back up here, it was 68.7. It has rounded it off to the nearest whole number, which is uh, in this instance, we've got this negative uh, 68.0. Okay. Um, then our base fuel ratio or I'm not fuel ratio, base fuel pressure, basically this should match what you're actually running. It just uh, helps with calculating for the EC, ECU to uh, know what kind of fuel pressure it's looking at so it can make the proper adjustments for the fuel. Um, and then of course, obviously the injector size you're gonna use, keeping in mind this may very well be a starting point just because it says, let's say 1500 and notice it did kind of round off here as well. I'd put 1500 and it rounded it off. So. Don't always, uh, don't always think that just because you've put 1500 or whatever injector size, they're just going to come back and say that exact same number. It may change. And just, you can put whatever number you want in here. You can be running 450 cc injectors. That doesn't mean that's what this number has to be. Yes, initially you may be telling the computer, uh, this is what size injector I have, but uh, lowering this number will make your mixture richer raising it will lean it out so there's some calculations there uh, which I've discussed in other videos as far as the injector size uh, then the base pressure uh, and then your stoichiometric ratio whether you're running 14.7 for pump gas or uh, I believe it's a 9.8 I'm going off the top of my head for let's say E85 or whatever the other number is you know depending on the the uh, fuel you're running keeping in mind that let's say if we change this to 9.8 for example that's not what we're looking at on our wide band we still want to be looking at 14.7 um, this is just the ratio uh, air to fuel ratio uh, to get that stoichiometric ratio that that ideal uh, ratio that you're looking for but this in this particular instance is making a calculation this is, if i drop it from 14.7 to 9.8 it's an easy way of, of making a calculation of how much more additional fuel you have to have uh, to get close to the same uh, in air fuel ratio that you were running without having to make individual adjustments to the whole and table, of course. Then once you do this, you may have to adjust your dead time as well. Um, going into a little bit more, uh, probably I should be, but um, 
if you're not familiar with this right here, how to use it, just leave it at your 14.7 and you can make your adjustments from there. Not a big deal. So, um, dead time, keep in mind, that's more going to be for idle, your global fuel, basically your injector size here that you put in. This is going to be more for your top end that you're using and dead time usually, uh, has to do with your idle. Okay. Um, uh, keeping in mind also too, global dead time, is basically the same as your injector battery adjust uh, even though this isn't actually a fuel tab it's still fuel related so we're going to discuss this momentarily but basically we're saying um, at let's say 14 volts if your charging system is running about 14 volts this is how much dead time you're using at that voltage let's say if your battery is dying and you're running let's say nine volts you may not run the same 475 at 14 volts as you would at nine. So you may need a more, little bit more fuel because your fuel output is going to be dependent on your voltage that you're running from your fuel pump. So you may need a little bit more fuel at nine volts than 14. So this is the reason why it is basically bumping up and it comes down the higher the voltage. So uh, this is just voltage based dead time. Same thing. This is global. So if you add the other thing you got to keep in mind is let's say we, let's say we don't even touch this table right here we keep it stock settings uh, we adjust our global dead time let's say 100 if we do it by this one right here we're basically adding let's say 100 to the whole table all the way across in your injector battery adjust table so everything here is going to have 100 uh, added to it um, let's see um, I particularly just usually use global dead time. I know people are up in the air about, you know, oh, you have to do each one individually. Yes, it may help depending on how the car drives uh, because of the other one using it. If you're using it globally, let's say 100, 100 for, for dead time and it adds it all the way across, your particular set of injectors may not like 100 just at this particular slider or 100 at this slider. It may need different voltages based on or, or different amounts of dead time based on different voltages. So uh, that's something you have to keep in mind there as well. Uh, if it's a small set of injectors, a lot of time, let's say 450s, 550s, I can normally just deal with the global based uh, dead time and be good to go there. Um, now then, I'll just jump over here real quick to fuel cut. This is a new... Uh, feature uh, new release so if you don't have the latest software and firmware you may not have this one uh, this is one that Thomas Doris uh, had implemented not long ago I can't think of the exact date uh, but it helps to uh, limit your boost that you're running to keep you from over boosting basically we'll we'll uh, cut that spark um, based on your your settings either load factor or ECU uh, boost, which is something you would need to be logging uh, to whatever you had it set up at. Uh, I've just got it at the stock settings as far as what came out with ECM link as far as this is concerned. Don't forget that if you have these set up, let's say a lower one, let's say uh, 20 and you're trying to shoot for 30 and it's cutting out on you, keep in mind, look here, it may not be anything with the tune or the, even though this, yes, this is tune, may not have anything to do with uh, fuel output or uh, ignition it may just be your settings in here screwing you up so keep that in mind okay uh, individual dead time this is just individual dead times per injector basically you know if you're having to smooth it out um, because every injector is going to be different and you can do the increments of how many steps one two five how much of a percentage you're going to use so um, I never really used this one. I've got injector, injectors that are 2150s. I've never really had to have really even adjusted this. I've honestly never used it. Um, I've had cars running smooth enough to where it hasn't been an issue. So, um, and then the short pulse width adjustments. This is basically, uh, I've had to discuss this one with Kevin Jure, um, honestly, because uh, this one was a little bit confusing to me. And I'm not really going to discuss it a whole lot on this particular video. I may discuss this one in its own dedicated uh, video regarding this. But basically, if you're having bigger size injectors and having issues uh, with idle, um, with the amount of fuel you're running, this is where you're going to be using this if you have got a larger set of injectors. If it's a small injector, this is really isn't even going to pertain to you. Um, but luckily, Kevin Drew was nice enough to uh, give me some feedback on this particular tab. Uh, and the reason why it was just a little confusing to me, I'll hit my little question mark over here uh, and we'll pull that up real quick.
basically this part right here. And of course, I don't particularly read things and uh, make sense of it. Sometimes it has to be broken down to me. But um, anyway, if, if you read that, you might understand why it's a little bit confusing to me. Um, anywho, um, that's, that's all I'm going to cover on this particular video. I'll come back and I'll adjust this section right here uh, later on. Let me make sure I was clicking on the right section. Yep. I believe that was the same same one there that I was looking at. Anywho, uh, yeah, that, that was the part that uh, confused me right here now that I found it. The quasi-closed loop mode of operation. Whatever in the heck that actually meant. I don't know. But smarter people out there that know more than me. So I don't know everything. But I uh, hope that clears up a little bit about the fuel tab. Because I know I made one earlier, but I just didn't... Uh, I didn't know where it went to. I'm assuming it maybe got deleted. I don't know, but I figure I'll make another one. Uh, hopefully that covers a little bit more. And uh, I'll, I'll post more videos as I get the time. Y'all have a good day.